Okay, here's a fishbowl bill material demo video for you all. This is Lance at Brando Consulting, inventory software expert since 2006. So the easiest way to create a bill of material in fishbowl is actually to start out at the part screen. Um, if you start out at the part screen and pull up a part that you want to manufacture, simply click new bomb that will take you to the bomb screen and already fill in these fields for you. So that makes it easy. It says, okay, we've got a finished good. And from here, click the green plus sign and add raw goods right there. Click next and enter the raw good I want to add and click finish. Now we've got a raw good and a finished good. Another way is click the green plus sign and click batch add. Be careful with this one because the first screen to pop up is add finished goods and we already have finished goods on there. So click next and now we can add a list of raw goods. See that? Uh, if you're looking for the raw goods just start typing something in that will narrow down the list and we can start adding raw goods. Okay, so that's that's a couple different ways to create. So let's talk about the features in the bill of material. I'm going to go to another bill of material that I already created. We'll go ahead and save that one. Sure, why not? Now this bill of material is a pool cover. Now don't get caught up in that. You may manufacture um, food items. You may put together mechanical items like uh, firearms or um, desk stands or who knows what you're what you're assembling right it could be a light fixture you're putting together um, I, I could go on and on and, and get distracted with all the different things that you can uh, put together here so let's look at this um, notice here we've got different units of measure that is noteworthy there are about four different units of measure you want to think about in fishbowl the unit of measure you purchase with that's the vendor part unit of measure. The unit of measure you stock in, will count in, that's the part unit of measure. Then there's the bill of material raw goods. And that's the unit of measure you pick in when you pick for a bill of material. And it's the unit of measure you consume in manufacturer order or work order. Um, so as long as you have a conversion set up over here under the unit of measure screen, see there's a conversions tab and all kinds of units of measure as long as you have a conversion multiplier set up then even if you stock in one unit of measure you can consume in a bill of material in a different and then of course the last unit of measure is the unit of measure you sell in and that does not necessarily have to be in the finished good unit of measure you um, so as long as the bridges are all connected with the, with the unit of measure conversion multiple. Okay, so enough about units of measure. Now let's take a look at a couple of other types of items. We've got labor here. Labor's got a unit of measure of hour. In order to consume labor, it's not this price adjustment screen that we're looking at for labor cost calculation. I'm gonna click on this link to the labor screen and We'll see here that this labor has a unit of measure of hour right there. And the cost is set up here. $30 an hour for labor. That's just an average cost. Now, you'll want to create an absorption account in QuickBooks. Don't map this to your wages account. So this labor, when you put it on the bill of material, it's going to credit the labor absorption account roll it up into whatever finished good account, whatever account the finished good is mapped to. And then later when you consume that finished good, then that finished good account will be credited and the cost of goods sold account that finished good is mapped to. So same thing with overhead as well. If you want to track some sort of overhead expense for the, the bill of material. Now, a bill of material is the plan. It's like the recipe in the recipe book on the shelf, okay? The bill of material gets used over and over and over and over again. The work order is a bill of material multiplied by whatever quantity. So say you're baking cakes. 
um, the recipe shows you how to bake one cake. The work order says, hey, we're going to bake 100 cakes in this shift. All right, so don't get too caught up with getting everything exactly right in the bill of material because you and I know, depending on the, the temperature and the weather that day, um, what you put in to food items may vary, right? And also picking is flexible. So later on when you pick, you can over pick and then use what you need to use in this recipe, okay? So the bill material is like a standard repeat. So let's look at this thing here, uh, this one time item. That's a useful piece to the puzzle. I don't think I have any one time items set up, but let's check on that box. What that does is <clears throat> you may have items that don't go with the multiplier, right? Um, like if you are encapsulating powder, for instance, for supplements, you may have to clean the machine before you um, fill the capsules. That cleaning is done just one time, although the capsules are filled tens of thousands of times. Okay, so you may have a powder recipe where you're blending powders to put in uh, the, the vitamins or supplements, but you only clean the machine one time. That's what this one time is for. Now let's look at the stage. The stage is for multi-level bills of material. If you want to connect this to a lower level bill of material, then first you need to create a bill of material for the item that should have a stage. And then you can add that bill of material to this bill of material. So this bill of material, we're making a pool cover here. There's another bill of material on the list over to the left. If I load that up, that looks like it could be a sublevel bill of material. So if I add that part to this bill of material, we'll go ahead and click add and do 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 add it there. Click next and now we've got a sublevel bill of material. We just need to make it a stage, check the box and add it there. Now we've got a link to that other bill of material. Nice, huh? So there's no limit on how many sub-level bills of material you can have. Let's go back to this previous bill of material. Check out this dial here. Whoa, whoa, whoa. This dial is a functional setting which affects how bills of material are, con are turned into work orders, how work orders are created from this bill of material. Be sure to take close look at this and Test these different functions out before you go live. Don't jump into your live file until you've thoroughly tested this. Are you a company that manufactures in anticipation of a sale? Or are you a company that manufactures only if a customer asks for it? If you're a company that manufactures in anticipation for a sale, then do you have your min and max levels set up in the system. In other words, your reorder points. If this is set to short quantity and this part, this 2000 PT here gets put on a sales order, then Fishbowl will automatically create a work order for that sales order. It won't automatically issue it, but it will create it. There is a setting over here on the manufacturer order screen that says issue the manufacturer order when sales order is issued. So if that is checked, it will automatically issue it, but the default is unchecked. So understand these settings and test them out. Auto create means auto create from another work order or auto create from, an, from a sales order. So if this is the item that you're selling to the customer and you put, it, put the item on the sales order, it will create. If this is the item that you put on another work order, if it's a sub-level work order, then when the parent work order is added and that parent work order is issued, then it will auto-create. Well, actually, it'll auto-create whether it's issued or not. If it's just added, then automatically add it as long as it's connected with this stage right here, okay? It has to be connected with this stage checkbox. Now, if this is set to never, then 
This is also a good thing because you can aggregate your manufacturing. You can say, okay, even though this sales order created the work order, I don't want a one-to-one -one ratio between work orders and sales orders. I want to bring in all of my sales order demand and then aggregate that and create one work order that fills the demand of all those sales orders. Okay, in order to aggregate your demand, you set the auto create setting to never. And then over here on the manufacture order screen, you can use this auto MO feature right here that automatically sees the demand of all your different uh, work orders or sales orders, whatever is calling for that bill of material. And it automatically um, puts it together, gives you an option to allow you to create an aggregate manufacturer order. This says create single manufacturer order. If we had more demand, there'd be a whole list of work orders to create here. And they can all be separate or they can all go together. Anyways, uh, we'll go over that in another video. But for this video right here on the bill of material, make sure you get the right setting before you go live and test it out. Okay. Another nice feature on the bill of material screen is this pick location. Nice little, nice little warehouse management tool. Now the default is bomb default location. Notice the tooltip, it says the destination. So a bill of material can have a default location here, like a station, a workstation, or a machine. This is the area where the manufacturing or the blending, the mixing, whatever it is, the filling that you do, this is the station or the room or the machine that that takes place and so obviously you need to pick your inventory from your stock location to that manufacturing location so if you sign assign this bill of material a default location for your warehouse these locations over here on the left hand side are warehouse location groups by the way this file has uh, six different buildings spread out across the the US um, and we're saying if this is manufactured in this building, then we want it done by, we want it done in this assembly area right here. So if we choose that assembly area, then our pick to location on our picking screen is going to default to pick. It'll tell them where to take it when they've picked. Now, notice this area changes when you select a different line right here. So if you have a particular part that goes to a different station maybe you have half of your work order that goes to one station and another half of your work order that goes to a different station we can divide those up by choosing each line and say this line this particular part gets picked to this location and this particular part gets this location now notice there's another option here the same as bomb item pick location so in other words if you don't want them all picked to the same location, check that box and select a location for each item. Now, one of my favorite features Fishbowl added in the recent years is this category feature right here. To create a category, go to the calendar screen found over under general. Click on this little categories tab right here and highlight work order, right click and select new category and then we can add new categories. Notice I played around with this earlier, created a labeling, encapsulating, bottling, blending categories. So each category can represent your workstation or your assembly area, whatever you want to call it. Um, and then that helps you with the bill of material scheduling. So if this, if this bill of material is always assembled or manufactured or mixed, in the same place, then you select the category that it's assigned to, click save, and then every time you create a work order, that work order will show up under that category. And when you pick and create a pick ticket, or excuse me, when it shows up on the calendar, you'll see the schedule in that category. Talking about calendaring, it's good to put a nice block of time here for the estimated time 
Interestingly, this time does not apply to the bill of material. It applies to the work order, which is a batch, right? It's got a multiplier past the bill of material. So this estimate put, the best thing to put here is your average batch size. That'll put it on the calendar, but then you can edit it later. It's never going to be exact because your batch size may differ. Now on the subject of batch sizes, notice here we're creating one. What should your finished good quantity be? This is something you should play with as well. It may be a batch size, but if you make the finished good a quantity of a batch, that's less flexible because over on the manufacturer order screen, when you add bills material to the manufacturer order screen. This quantity right here is going to be the bill of material quantity. It's not going to be the finished good quantity on the bill of material. Okay, so think about the kind of flexibility you want to have. A batch size quantity is best for you. Maybe it's not. Try it in both ways before you go live. So back to the details here. We've got class tracking. That's a nice feature that maps with QuickBooks. That class flows through to the bill of material. If you want to classify and run a PL by class or a balance sheet by class in QuickBooks, that class flows through and it ties to the journal entry later on when you close out the work order. And Fishbowl has great revision level tracking. You'll see the revision level there. Over on the part screen, you'll have another revision level here that you can track. And then also we'll see parts can be tracked by revision level if you check this box. So you don't necessarily have to create a new part number or create a bill, new bill of material after, when you change the revision level. Um, that's okay too. It's, this is flexible. It's an option here to say uh, what revision level this bill of material is. New feature added in this recent year. This is um, some steps for your bill of material. These steps flow through to the work order screen here and each step can be finished. There is a start and finish feature. Here's a better example. It's got multiple steps and a checkbox to say that step is finished. So think about how you'll use that. You may or may not use that, but the feature is there. Custom fields are always nice to have. All the things you can do with custom fields, right? And then the Dropbox integration is great. I know Fishbowl has come out with a more recent feature that may replace the Dropbox feature, but if you need to upload schematics or instructions, this is a great place to link to the Dropbox. You can just drop the file there. Now one last tip before we go. This stage has a link. So we've got a sub-level bill of material, but we may want to aggregate that bill of material. If we go to that bill of material, we may not want that bill of material to be created when the parent bill of material is created because we want to aggregate the manufacturing. If we set this to never and go back to the parent bill of material that we added this to, Fishbowl will give us a little warning symbol and say, hey, this won't be created. That's actually my preference. So we can aggregate. That may not be the preference for your company, but with all the companies I've worked with, that's usually the go-to. Make it a sub-level bill of material, but don't make the make it auto-create. What this does is it allows you to run the bill of material report, and the bill of material re report will include the sub-level bombs. So thanks for joining us today. Hopefully this video was helpful. Like and subscribe below. Please comment if you have any questions.